Hello everyone and welcome to RJC Models. Okay, so in this episode we are back up here again and Clarice is back here with me for the second part of her Spitfire. So last time we went from um, steps one to three and that made us the little cockpit just there. Um, so from what we're gonna do from now is um, from four onwards and that will be putting the fuselage halves and the cockpit all together and the wings on. So let's get cracking on with it, see? So I shall just adjust the camera to point down at the bench and we'll get going, okay? Okay, everyone, so here we go. We're gonna start with the fuselage halves. Um, so if you wanna go and cut those bits and pieces out, Clarice, which is the two sides. And what we'll do is we'll paint the interior there. So it's A2, yeah? A2, yep. Yeah. We'll cut them out and clean them up. That should be nice and sharp. That's a, a, a new blade in there. We've got a good cutting action there. God, that's quite an awkward, uh, awkward little tab there, isn't it? Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we're gonna do before we. As you can see here, as we were explaining before, um, is um, what we talked about flash. So as you can see on this part here, you can't see where there we go. Just on the on the nose here, so you can just see a little bit of a bit of over over mould, and that is just your flash. So what we'll do is we'll take that down and um, get it all nice and smooth for it all to go together. Cut it off first, yeah. That's always a good way to do to, to save yourself a little bit of work. If you cut it back a little bit and you can file with the sand and sponge then. Okay. okay, so what we went ahead and did was we went ahead and took away um, all of the um, flash the nubs that sort of stuff off both sides of the, the fuselage and what we're going to do now is um, on the instructions you can just see a little line on the in interior of the cockpit just there and what that is that depicts the inside of the aircraft okay. so what we'll do is um, I find it helps sometimes sometimes it doesn't it depends on what how, how you like to play it so I usually get a, a nice pen um, and just mark out that little line on the fuselage so you know where you're painting up, up to okay. or where you're painting from and to. So if you uh, take the pen and put that line in. So it's just, you only want a, a little faint line in there. It's quite minute. Yeah, yeah. Usually prefer a borrow. <laughs> That's the only one we had to hand. Give some dots. Yeah, or some, some dots, some lines, whatever, just so you know where you're going from and to. It doesn't really matter anyway because the paint will cover it. And it's not really going to get seen by the because the cockpit will. So just, yeah, there you go. So just there, you can see the little line. So you'll paint from here and you'll finish there. And the same on the other side. And the same on the other side, yep. <laughs> Is it not working now? Okay, so now those lines are marked out, what we're gonna do is just get some uh, Hataka paint again, um, which is the interior color, and a small card like we showed before, just to the side there. And just put a small blob on there, actually we go for a bigger blob, because we're probably gonna need quite a lot of this. Um, so I just want some, some thin strokes to go across the, the interior there, just so you can see. I 
I, I find this the most therapeutic part of making the models. That's the, the painting and the making everything look realistic. Because it's running into the paint, actually. It's quite cool. Is it? Yeah. Ah. That's why it's good when you get little, little bits like that. Because obviously they, they, were, they wouldn't have been clean copics anyway. They've been, they would have been landed, repaired, and then ready to go back up again. So the beauty of this stuff is it's quite thick so it covers nicely because mm. usually you'd have to do a few thin coats but just as a, as a beginner it's always good to get a paint that you know is going to gonna cover well first time. right there. <laughs> so what we'll do is well once that's finished. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. So what we'll do once that's dry, we'll come back with the ink wash um, and I'll show you how to make those details stand out a lot. Um, which always look really, really nice. Put some more lines. Yep. I like that effect. It's good, isn't it? But let's see that that's, I think that's the, the beauty of model making. It's once you've learned the basic techniques, is finding your own way around it and <clears throat> adapting to things. That you sort of think, oh yeah, I like that. Like anything, it's trial and error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so say you can you can sit down, and get taught everything over and over a million times but you just sort of find your own way of how to do it so someone will teach you this is what you need to do like we're doing here but it, it does all extend down to okay so that's how we do the basics so i've got to go away and give that a go and if you find a shortcut then you know that's there's nothing wrong in that you can find your own way yeah <laughs> <laughs> as fleetwood mac did say well, not in so many words. Yeah. Sorry, guys, if you're listening. <laughs> Oops. I feel like I should be offended by that last comment. What's that? Sorry, guys, if you're listening. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. No. Oops. That actually looks. That does look, look quite a good effect there, doesn't it? I'll show the guys what you've done there. So. There we go. Again, this is what we're saying about um, finding your own way of doing things. So where we've used an ink pen, it's just sort of bled into the, the paint a little bit. Again, that's not too much of a problem because you can just blend that in with the weather we're going to put on there to make this look, all these little details look realistic and for them to pop out. So it doesn't really matter too much. Um, oh, sorry. So just as long as you've got the basics down and you know, give a rough idea what you're going to do, you're not going to open a kit and go oh my god what am I doing um, as a lot of people do you know I've heard people go uh, I've tried model making but it really didn't I got a bit put off by how many bits and pieces there were and that sort of stuff and it's because people haven't taken the time to sit down and teach them or to show them how to do it yeah but then I suppose the best way to do it is to start small like this kit yeah yeah most definitely and I say these kits are these small kits are very relatively inexpensive you know Five pounds will get you the, the I a just kit like this. Want to do that one again because yeah, yeah, that's not a problem. That turned out nicely. Yeah. I'm just gonna put some more ink on. Yeah, yeah. So again, this is another way of using. I mean, this is like we showed before. This is um, actually artist inks. So um, sorry, I'm just gonna read your brush there a minute. So that's what I've done here is I've taken some of this stuff. So it's just Windsor and Newton um, oil. And just until I, I just thinned it down until I until I found something I was happy with, like um, a consistency I was happy with, 
again, it's, I mean, a lot of people will say two to one, that sort of stuff, with the paints and the thinners and that sort of stuff. But I just sort of did that until I come up with something I was happy with. Um, but the way you're doing it there is is just a cheap way of doing it, really. You know, if you've got, because not a lot of people are going to have inks and that sort of stuff just floating around. So the pen, if you get an ink pen like that, like an ultra ball or anything like that, it's just a nice way of doing it. Um, and it, again, it gives you that sort of weathered look, so it makes it look quite nice. But I say, well, what we'll do is we'll get we'll use the ink wash anyway, just to make those those instruments and everything pop out. I think another thing as well with model making is people just forget to have fun. No, not fun, but forget just to, you know, just to, oh, you know, forget forget what people say. And, you know, you get what we call rivet counters. And, well, a lot of people, like my, I mean, myself likewise, worried a lot about what people say when I first started. Or, you know, what, if this person doesn't like what that person doesn't like it. But the thing you got to do is just enjoy it yourself, I, I feel. Sooner or later, Reese is going to tell me off for not talking enough, but I'm losing myself. <laughs> See, there you go. That's what you've got to do. You just lose yourself into the model. Forget what about what's going on around you for a few times. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. Yeah? Yeah, it looks really, looking really nice. So what we'll do is we'll let those dry a minute, and then we'll come back, and we'll show you how to do the ink washes and make the those details pop out. Okay, so what we've done now, now the, uh, the fuse lost fuselage sides are nice and dry what we'll do is we'll just um, put an ink wash across these raised bits and pieces just so it, it pops out a little bit more okay. um, just so you can see the, the lines and that sort of stuff and the, there's a little door in there as well, well the pilot's door let's give that a little bit of a shake there we go because then what you can do is you can use bits from the lid yeah yeah you don't need a lot And what you want to do is not be, not stand on principle, just wash it across as if you were just like wiping it. Because what will happen is when that dries, it will dry back um, and it won't be as, as um, sort of as shiny as that. So it will dry, it will knock it all back and all the little, the ink will actually sit in the, the raised details. Make it, make it pop out, yeah, make it look really good. Spot on. Okay, yeah. this is, I'm going to show the camera that. So this is what we mean by how we'll make it pop out. So there we go. I don't think you can see that very well. You can't see that at all. <laughs> so just there, as you can see, catch it in the light. Just see it. Just how the, the instrument panels and the door and that sort of stuff have just popped out, and you can really see it stand out prominent. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you haven't really got a stand on principle, you're literally just washing it across. Which is a good thing about this art sometimes, it can be really messy but look really, really good when it's all dry and it drops much back. Because what a lot of people do, which we'll, we'll see them do that, go, oh no! Um, and try and perfect it. Um, but the good thing with this technique is if you just let it dry, you know, give it a few minutes just to dry back. Um, it would correct itself. It's like it was, it was self-correct. Okay. Okay. So now that's all sorted out and it's all, um, <laughs> it's all been dried there, and it's got quite a nice effect of the interior detail there. It just pops out just nicely. So what we'll do now is we'll do what's called dry fitting. So what that is, is we get the three parts we've got there. Okay. Um, and just, so you, you... Hold them together. Hold them together, yeah, yeah. Like you would if you were going to actually stick it together, but we're not going to stick it together. Just to make sure it fits. Yeah, yeah. And the good thing about the the Spitfire and the sort of, when you do um, cockpits like this, I don't know if you can see, but the actual rear bulkhead is sort of like um, a weird sort of like, it looks like almost like a body sort of shape. So see the body shape there. Yeah. So if you line that up with the, the actual body of the spit and the lumps and the bumps. Oh, 
But isn't uh, ugh, I'm confused. That's okay. That's supposed to sit on there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, actually, it's supposed to sit underneath it. So. Underneath it. Yeah. So that L, the, well, the L shape not, there. It's, it's not going to sit underneath it. Okay. You do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what what you do is, so see how the the rear bulkhead is a sort of weird sort of shape. What you do is you line that shape up with the side, the shape of, see the shape in there? Mm -hmm. There's a shape just inside the Spitfire, that's just how the, the, the Spitfire is made. So, so see the shape there? Yep. What you do is you get the two sides um, and you roughly get it to there as you can. So what you do is you just line it up and see how the tabs just fit. There's a little tab just in there. That's great, but the marks... Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. So. The marks are just a little bit off on the back there, but there's a, a little tab just behind the bulkhead, um, and just in front of the bulkhead, it all just lines up to. Um, and that's just all. It sits in there like that, and it'll actually sit in the actual carriage. So what you do is you um, dry fit that side like that, and then what you do is, the best way to do this is if you put it on the bench, so you've not got to hold the cockpit in place, Make sure it's all still in place when you put it down, which that is nicely. Get the other side and just lay the other side on top like that. Okay. So now you've got the cockpit fitting in there like that. You can squeeze it together like I'm doing there and you can go around and see if you've got any where it needs filling or any gaps, that sort of stuff. Any, anything that needs cleaning up. And then what's always best to do is just run your thumb thumb now so you hear that clicking like yeah. that that just means there's a little bit of a ridge there so what we'll do is we'll glue it together um, and then we'll just get rid of that ridge just sand it down yeah yeah sand it down and then what I'll do is once you've done that um, we I'll show you how to there's some just some panel lines there and what I'll do is I'll just show you just how to just scribe those panel lines back in again okay okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to use two different sorts of glues here um, you don't actually have to do it this way you can just use this one but I prefer to use this um, on the actual fuselage half. So th what we're going to do here, this is Tammy Extra Thin, that's the glue we've been using all the way along, just to glue the cockpit into there. Okay. So that th this is a, this dries a little bit quicker. So if you just want to put a blob along that rear bulkhead, or run a, run a line down the bulkhead. On there? On here, on that bulkhead there. So just run from the bottom to the top. Because what this, this what we'll do is, once we're, once that's in, once that's glued in, and then the same on this one there. Um, that will be dry in, and that should be dry by the time we're ready to put the other side on. Um, and the good thing, and the other one we're going to use is um, what's called Tamiya Plastic Cement. So this is a little bit thicker. So what will happen is, once the, when the two two bits melt together, you'll get a bit of a ridge. So that will fill any gap. If there, if there is a gap, that will run into it and just fill it off. So it's just basically creating a, a sort of um, ready-made filler rather than having to go off and buy some or make some up. Okay. Yep, there you go, spot on. Perfect. Um, and now what you want to do... On this other side? Yep, just run a bit on the other side. And it will smell good too. Smell. It does <laughs> smell very good. That's, that's, that is the smell of a childhood, that is. Using nail painting with a yeah, see, they've, they've come to suffice, haven't they? Come in handy here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to just swap the glues over a minute and use this one. Yeah, yeah, and we're going to do first. If oh. you know. So, what we want to do is put this glue just round the edge. You'll be careful because the brush is a little bit bigger than this one, just so just round the edges, so along the edges of the Spitfire, okay. along the fuselage, um, and that will just be the glue. So this is why it says about the the the, the small the, the the extra thin first because you can pick that up that fuselage side up without it without worrying it moving around that sort of stuff.
This one doesn't actually smell as nice as the other one. <laughs> Not that I condone glue sniffing. Don't sniff glue, kids. <laughs> Snoo glyphing. Yeah, don't snoo glyph. I don't know, the smell of this glue and, and body filler, or bondo, for those guys over the pond. That's, a, that's the smell of my childhood, that. How quickly does this dry? Uh, that one doesn't dry, because it's a little bit thicker, it doesn't dry as quick as the other one. So it gives us a bit of time to work. But what about the other stuff? This stuff? Yeah, um, I mean that, one already. that dries within... Usually, because it, it evaporates in the air, so it evaporates very quickly. So do you reckon I should put another... Um, I think it should be okay. Because obviously the, the contact of that will make it grab. So it will hold it in place nice. Okay. So what you want to do, see these little, these little nodules there? See the little pegs? Yeah. Just line those up nice, and it will just go boom, and pull straight together. That's it. What you do is just go like you're doing there, just go around the model and just squeeze it together and it'll all just should just click. Well not click, but it will just sit. There we go. And what we'll do now, see how you're holding that there. We'll just get a little clamp, if I can find some. Oh, just over there. Um Where? just there, see the tub there? No, let me go for a second. Oh, this one? Yep. What we'll do is just get a peg. And just peg that together. So again, what we'll do is, this is just a, a tub of pegs of all different sizes. So we've got some small ones. What we'll do is we'll get a peg like this and just peg it on the front. The amount of pegs my dad, wooden pegs that my dad went through because of. On the end. Yep, and you want to put one just on the other end. That's where all my little pegs went. These are my pegs, actually. I bought these ones. All of mine have disappeared. Have they? Yeah. Well, these are, these are my ones. Real t real time peg stealage. Not that I stole them. I bought these ones. Mm. <laughs> I believe you. Okay, so we'll put that aside to. We'll put that aside to dry. Um, and we'll just get rid of this glue because we don't need that one anymore. For the minute. And we'll come on back to the, the extra thin. So what we've done now is we've done step four. Oops, sorry. Step four of the instruction manual. So what we'll do now is we go on to step five. And with step five, um, you get a choice of wingtips. I think you said you wanted to do the, the circular ones already, didn't you? Yeah. Um, so you get a choice of flat wingtips or you get round wingtips. So we're going to go with the round ones. So what you do is you just find your appropriate wingtips. Um, so now, so if you can go on to that one, if you want to just find the, your, your wing parts. That'll be those ones. That's the ones. Interesting fact about Spitfires. Do you know why the, the, the Spitfire's wing was actually conical? Just like this. Here's one I built earlier. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't Blue Peter, bed. <laughs> oh, I wish. So, just like that, I don't think you can see it very well. But the Spitfire's wing is actually sort of not flat, it's at an angle. And the reason that they used to do that, that they were built like that, was because of um, they were more manoeuvrable. They were taken from America, an American um, sort of stunt pilot aeroplane. <laughs> Interesting fact, see? Full of learnings in this one, not just model making. <laughs> Hear the concentration, folks. <laughs> Why is a perfectionist? <laughs> Which is never a bad thing. Never a bad thing. I don't know. It can <laughs> be a bad thing. There we go.
there's actually some quite nice um, panel detail on these this model actually. Um, well, you can see that. Let's get rid of that glare a little bit. There we go. Just on the on the panels there is a nice bit of panel detail. I'll show you guys how you can get that detail out and make it pop out, stand out when we come to the the later stages of the model. Right, okay, so the fuselage halves are now glued together and are looking very lovely, if I do say so myself. Um, what we have come across though is just on the front, on the front of the, there we go, that's a nice, nice shot there. Just on the front of the, the spit there, we've got a nice big um, hole, what it looks like. But the good thing is we can remedy it just by squeezing it two back together and running a bit of more extra thin down there and just holding that till it dries. But one way you could remedy that is, sorry, sorry, grab this. One way you could remedy it is if what I've got here is a just an old bottle of extra thin. Um, what you do is you just cut bits of sprue off. So like you've got here, just an old, old bit of sprue. You just snip a little bit off like that. And you probably want it a little bit smaller than that. Um, but that would do just for the example. Um, and this is where these come into handy. These are your bits you've filed off, you've cut off, that sort of stuff. If you get big bits like this, just what you do is just pop it into the, the old extra thin, wait until it goes to sort of like a gloop, that sort of consistency. Um, I'd say like French cheese, that sort of gloopy consistency. Um, wait for that to go like that and then you can use it as like a filler so you go down if that hole was any bigger you could go down there run this run the, the goo down the, the seam and then when it dries you can sand it back to the flat edge you've got on the on the nose of the spit and then what you could also do is um re remark the the panel line in but we'll we'll do that anyway so i think it's just a little bit there's a bit of flash on the top there so we'll wait for that to dry um and then we'll show you how to do that. Okay. Okay. So what we've got here is we found out that one of the, the panel lines on this tip is just a little bit out. So what we've, what we've done there is we've put like a, a visual aid on there just to show where the mark's supposed to be, the, the panel line's supposed to be. So what we're going to do is, if you get your knife, but just if you, you'll feel the knife go into the, the, the panel, the panel line that's already there, and just very gently, so... If you just don't put any pressure on it like that and just run run the knife along the panel line and it will all the way to the end of the wing tip and that what that would do is it will just scribe that line back in properly. There you go. So the masking tape's a good way to do it, or what you could do is use um, a bit of um, like the ruler. A straight edge is usually pretty good or if you've got a kit with photo etch that bends around the the seam you can just follow the the photo etch around there as well but so this is a pretty good way of doing it so you don't want to go, you don't really want to go too deep this is just uh, enough just so you can see it and it gets sort of like you get like a little so you can feel the knife in the groove there we go Sorted. Sorted. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That's okay. What happened there? The, the, the other tips just bent down a little bit, but it's not really too much of a problem. Because what we do is just straighten it out and just put a, run a, a bead of extra thin just along there, and that will glue just in there nicely. Okay. The next bit to do is um, that um, fuselage should be dry by now. Oops. <laughs> so as we've done that, that's nice and dry. Is it still a bit tacky? Perfect. Perfect. So what we've got now is we've got a nice glue mark in there. So what we'll do is we'll just jump off camera, get rid of that, that mark, and then we'll come back and um, put the two halves together. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, now we've 
cleaned everything up. We're going to put the wings and the fuse lights together. Um, so what we're going to do for that is we're going to use the thick or white glue for that. Um, and as you can see on there, some point off, there it is. as you can see there, it's quite the, it's quite marked out where the the fuse light has to go. So what you do is if you get quite generous with the the white glue in there, um, just like so on the sides of the wings and on the bottom. So give it a few, a couple of a couple of few big passes, and that should should do yeah. And then what what that actually does is it with the with the cement, is that um, it will create its own filler. So because it's a little bit thicker, it will take a little bit longer to dry. Therefore, it will it will melt the plastic a bit longer. So if you squeeze it together, it will it will make a little like mark for the where the, the gap would be. But that would that would now fill it, so it's um, nice and filled there. There we go. That should be should be enough glue on there now. That's generous enough. Yeah, that's generous enough. And then it goes in like that. Yep, that way. Yep. There we go. And you just drop the two together. And again, what you got to remember? You got to remember that the the Spitfire's got it's a, those elliptical wings, so it should just fit elliptically anyway. There we go. As you can see there, it will just fit together nicely. But you have I've got made a plane. You have, yeah. And what you've got there is you've got a nice, you've got a bit of a, a mark there. But if you squeeze it together, squeeze it all in, what it'll do, the glue will run into that gap and fill the gap. Um, so when that's dry, it'll be a nice, you, you get like a, what will look like a weld mark. But you just go in with a, a sander, sand it down, and that will be that on there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that. And that all put together. Um, so what we'll do when we come back next time is we will finish off the wings and the fuselage. So you, you can see how we do the the fill, the sort of set cleaning the, the sides up. Um, so the next stage will be the rear wings and the rudder. And move it on to the bottom of the side um, and I think even next time we'll be able to get ready for paint that sort of stuff um, now the, the color scheme that Clarice has chosen for this particular one is uh, with the D-Day black and white um, stripes so what we'll do is we'll show you how to do those as well so that will be all in the next video okay so thank you for watching don't forget to like subscribe any comments chuck it in the thing below um, and we'll put up a link to our RJC Models page on Facebook and Instagram where you can get all of us there as well if you need anything. Okay, so for now, see you later. Bye. Bye.